Speaker. Order. Stuart Smith. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, moving from the Second World War to present times, in fact, to today, um, I'd like to actually acknowledge uh, the Minister for Civil Defence, Nathan Guy, who today announced $14.4 million of funding to go to the Kaikoura uh, District Council, and I'd like to thank him on behalf of the people of Kaikoura. That's a very welcome, very welcome announcement, Mr Speaker. That we're talking about the second smallest council in New Zealand, the smallest being the Chatham Islands. And the council is grappling with uh, a lot of damaged infrastructure. In fact, Mr Speaker, uh, after the earthquake, the only way water, uh, the domestic water was being supplied into uh, Kaikoura was through two pl uh, plastic pipes running along the top of the ground. Now they have a rather large plastic pipe, which has actually been buried in parts of it, but, but still above the top of the ground. And, um, you know, it's going to cost uh, that council a lot of money to get all of its infrastructure back up, up to speed. Its sewerage ponds uh, were empty after the earthquake. No one quite knows where everything went. I suppose we can guess. Um, but it's, uh, it really has to repair that now, and it's quite expensive and a big impost on that small council. And this will be really welcomed by the people of Kaikoura. Uh, Mr Speaker, I wanted to talk um, a little bit about WISPs which are wireless internet service providers. And I think the day of the WISP is almost here. Um, Mr Speaker, in, in my uh, electorate, is one of typical uh, uh, issues that we're going to struggle with around our uh, in, internet infrastructure in New Zealand. We're talking about rather difficult to get places geographically, um, tight gullies with very few people in them. And we have done a fantastic job getting uh, ultra-fast broadband out. A whole lot of new uh, towns around New Zealand have been announced that they have ultra-fast broadbands coming out in RB, uh, UFB2. And there's an, an, an announcement soon on RBI2. And that will, that will reach a long way out. But to get that last most difficult 5% um, of New Zealand, I think the answer will be WISPs. And uh, in uh, Marlborough, there's a really good example in the Waihopo Valley where Creative um, Developments and the Pacific.net and Simcox Construction got together in the Waihopai along with the Marlborough District Council and put up on top of Big Hill a wireless uh, uh, transmitter, which was quite small and a, a, a container on top of the hill, and provided uh, Wi-Fi to homes right up in the most difficult to get places. No uh, cell phone coverage there, but now they can get a cell phone hotspot within their own home running off that Wi-Fi. And it brings those families right up, it breaks down that digital divide. And I believe that's the only way we're going to, to do that through the rest of New Zealand. Another good example of the opportunity is out in the Marlborough Sounds, where we have um, two thirds of New Zealand's aquaculture production in New Zealand. Sitting out there in the Marlborough Sounds, water quality measurements and those sorts of environmental parameters Currently, um, uh, those measurements are taken by someone manually in a boat. That could all be done uh, remotely as long as we have connectivity. And that connectivity will only come from a wisp, in my view. Putting a half a million dollar cell phone tower up in the middle of the sounds to capture a few permanent residents, some batches and some passing boats simply won't be um, economic. It won't make economic sense and it won't happen. A WISP, on the other hand, a tower can be built for a fraction of that price. Uh, it's designed really to go out into those small, hard-to-get places. And I think that is actually what, where we will go in the end. And it's, it's really um, actually quite rich to hear some uh, interjections coming from New Zealand First, who voted against RBI 1 in a Budget 2015, as I remember. So therefore, um, don't really care about the regions, and I'd actually, while I'm on that, Mr Speaker, I'd like to point out that in my electorate and in most of regional New Zealand, particularly in the South Island, we're desperately short of labour on, on our farms, in our garages, in lots of our businesses, and we are reliant on getting immigrants into the country who will come out and work in those properties. And it's, it's, that's what a, a growing economy needs, is skilled people coming into New Zealand and we don't need Luddites that will stand in the way of progress in the regions. And so the party that stands up for regional New Zealand, the National Party, cares about those things, cares about growth, and that's why I'm so proud to be a member of this party. Thank you.
Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, Dr. David Clark. Mr. Speaker, the